हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम एवरीवन जस्ट अ मोमेंट वी जस्ट सी इफ वी हैव एवरीथिंग रेडी यस ओके शुड वी स्टार्ट प्रदीप यू आर रेडी यू वांट टू टेस्ट योर यस रमेश कैन यू हियर मी यस दैट्स सुपर एंड we are ready okay okay shall we start oh yes yes okay so friends a wonderful day and a wonderful welcome to everyone it's it's always beautiful to connect with all these wonderful souls and uh, thanks to uh, master pradeep um, for joining us today and being available to share this wonderful topic we are going to hear today about karma so uh, friends let me give a little bit of uh, introduction so myself uh, ram ramesh i'm living in germany with madhu and uh, our journey into meditation had started in the year 1999 but i would rather say our real journey into spiritual science had started when we started sharing the practice of meditation to everyone in the year 2010 while we were in egypt and uh, since then we are in this mission or i would say joyful life purpose of sharing meditation practice vegetarianism and pyramid energy to everyone we come across so we are now living in germany since 3 years and we are doing the same and since few months we are digitally connecting to everyone and sharing the practice of meditation so today we utilize again this digital platform to have our wonderful master pradeep and i met pradeep yes uh, well in the year uh, 2010 and then i do i do i do feel that we are we were not meeting for the first time and uh, it's always wonderful to be around and to uh, talk to him because i find joy so uh, we have a couple of hours today to again hear him he was already here a couple of times and uh, pradeep uh, he's born in india and then he had migrated to australia uh, he did his masters while he was living there in australia and he's a certified meditation teacher apart from that uh, in the year 2014 uh, he he had become a custodian of this wonderful divine crystal a 144 facet divine crystal wonderful energies of oneness people do experience whoever come across and meditate in the presence of this crystal and um, pradeep had been uh, traveling all across the world together with uh, navneet and uh, they had been sharing this joy of meditation vegetarianism to everyone they come across so uh, friends without any delay let us invite please join me in inviting our wonderful master and dive into this session so thanks a lot namaste everyone again and namaste pradeep so namaste thank you ramesh namaste namaste to everyone and uh, namaste to ramesh for organizing this for hosting this um, it's a it's a beautiful start ramesh and it's always a great joy to associate uh, with such a beautiful friend and you are one of my very beautiful friends on the planet earth so it's a great joy to be associated with you thank you um, so friends uh, welcome all to this session and namaste and i can see a lot of familiar faces hello to everyone so we begin uh, the session with a few minutes of uh, meditation so friends please uh, sit comfortably make yourself comfortable we are going to do a 10 minutes meditation we, we are going to begin the session by preparing ourselves so this meditation is a preparation to get into the flow this workshop so sit as comfortably as possible if you are wearing specs please remove the specs
you can lean back, relax, and gently close your eyes. And let go, completely let go of everything. Just imagine that you are dropping your bodies and there is nothing for you to hold. And disappear into that nothingness. In this state of deep relaxation, Let your awareness be focused on your own natural breath. Just be in the present moment, making friendship with your own breath. Absolutely no thoughts whatsoever, my dear friends. Let us be with our own breath, clasping the hands, fingers into fingers, and crossing the feet. Witnessing your own breath, natural breath. Just becoming aware how the breath is going in and how the breath is coming out. As simple as that, my dear friends. For 10 minutes. You will listen to gentle music and the music will help you to go deep into your meditation. Kindly be with your breath, my dear friends. Only 10 minutes.
friends, friends, friends. Final 10 seconds. Gently place your hands on your eyes. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Whenever you are ready, you may slowly open your eyes. Okay, welcome back friends. So let us go into the topic. And uh, before I stop, I, before I start the session about karma and reincarnation, I would like to ask what motivated you to be part of this session? In other words, what is that you're looking for? So let us discuss for a few minutes, like what is that you are looking for in the session? And that will set the basis for the session to go forward. So you can type in the chat or you can unmute and speak. Yes. I like, I like. Hello, Freddy. You Hello, hear? Lucy. Hello. Um, it's nice to see you. I'd like to know the impactation of the karma uh, on my present life, my uh, the karma of all my uh, past life, and how this karma is in action now, and um, make. Um, make um stop some uh, something on me okay so you want to understand uh, the impact in your day-to-day -day life yes exactly okay. thank you good good thank you lucy anybody Hello. else uh this is shilpa here uh okay so shilpa do you mind uh, coming on the video yeah sure yeah thanks yeah, for the people who ask the question, please come on the video so that I can connect with you as well. Yeah, uh, good evening. Yeah, good evening. Uh, I'm interested to know about uh, pre-birth planning and karma so that I can understand uh, about the current life in a better way and uh, relate with it and uh, plan accordingly. Okay, so you want to... You want to know what is the pre, the link between karma pre-birth planning and, yeah, yeah. and link to the current life events. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you. Next. Namaste, sir. Uh, namaste, madam. Learning something new, sir. I want to learn something new. So you are curious to see if there is anything new. Okay. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, sir. Right. Thank you very much. In the topic of karma. So you want to learn something. Yes. Yeah, is there anything? Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Yes, Hello. So we, yeah. Hi. Good morning from London. Um, yeah, pleased hi. to see you again. Pleased to see you again. Um, yes, uh, um, same here. And uh, for, for me, is to get a more deeper understanding about the laws of the karma and, and how this is affecting my day-to-day -day attitudes and lives and how can I be more aware of them so I can work on the karma for a better life in the next life, basically. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you. So you, you are uh, Jose, right? So you're, uh, I remember you are a therapist. 
something. Yes, yes. Good memory. Yes. Good memory. <laughs> Good. Nice, nice to see you. Nice to yeah, see we, you. We met in London, yeah. Thank you. Who's next? Nancy? Yes, yes, Nancy. Yeah, hi. Uh, I am from Geneva, Switzerland. And um, having already read and followed several workshops on different uh, spiritual topics, uh, I am in this workshop particularly to better understand and uh, deepen my knowledge on how karma impacts in our different lives after reincarnation and reincarnation, and also how can we clean continuously those karmas, okay. etc. Thank you, Nancy. Hi, sir. Yes, hi. Uh, Chaitanya from Hyderabad. Chaitanya. Yes, yes, Chaitanya. Uh, sir, ahead. just want to know what exactly is karma and uh, how do we come out of it completely? And uh, how do we know that we have come out of karma? And how do we not uh, accumulate negative karma? What are the steps we need to take to know which is a, whether it's a negative karma or a positive karma? How to only accumulate positive karma and how not to accumulate negative karma? And how does it impact our lives? And how do we plan? Uh, I know bits and pieces, but I would like to listen from you today, sir. Thank you. OK. Thank you. Thank you, Chaitanya. Yes, we are going to discuss all those things today. Thank you. And Hello, Khadip. Ah, yes, and Mimi. Hello. Hello. I would like to know if um, knowing some of our previous uh, lives or incarnations would help us in the current one and in the future ones. Okay, so you want to know your uh, past lives, the previous lives to understand the present life? Yes. Okay. And you, you feel the, the karma topic is a link between understanding the previous life and the current life? Maybe I would like to discover that. Okay, so you want to discover that aspect. Okay, good. Thank you. Yes, who else? We have some uh, chat here. Um, so this this lady, Meenakshi, saying, I want to know about my pre-birth planning. And uh, Sonia is saying, hello, everyone. I attended the crystal session in Dubai. It was awesome. Couldn't have missed this one. Was waiting for Pradeep to come back. Okay, so so she is from Dubai. She wants to understand what is this workshop about. Then uh, then there is Marina from Bulgaria. I think I met I met you, Marina. Yes, and uh, so she wants to understand more about it. Okay, thank you. Uh, so then there is this Sonia. I'm saying I know I'm not the body or the mind. I'm trying to understand the journey of how Atma, I mean, soul chooses the body and the parents. Uh, how does the lessons from the previous life move on to the next? So that is Sonia. Good, Sonia. So then there is Vesna from Croatia. Hi, Vesna. And she's saying, hello, Pradeep. I would like to know how we can become more aware of our karma in our life and understand ourselves and to become a better version of ourself and uh, how, how can we clear it? Yes, Vesna, good, we are going to discuss it. Happy to see you here. So then there is another Pradeep, Pradeep Doshi, and he says, hello Pradeep, I want to know the types of karma, the laws of karma, and how to work it out to our advantage. Okay, good. And uh, then there's another person, Pankaj, I want to understand the link between karma, I mentioned in Bhagavad Gita and the implications on life. Okay, good. Anusha, a difference. Anusha is saying a difference between karma and free will and predefined things. Good. And there's somebody asking about how to improve the present life. And there is Janjab. Uh, he's saying, thank you. would like to know about the soul, how the soul chooses, how the soul chooses the parents. Okay, so wonderful friends. Good. So is there anybody who would like to speak? Hi, Prahit, sir. This is Ladini. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. I, I am in this workshop to know whether the diseases we are facing 
is from our previous karma or from our thoughts i want okay. to get um, okay get so you want to know about uh, the diseases whether it is linked to karma or is whether linked to thoughts okay okay wonderful ladini hi i just wanted to say hi okay hi roma roma is from dubai okay so you want just want to say hi no but you have to yes. say why you are here <laughs> <laughs> no i just wanted to um i mean some stuff happened to me so i just wanted to see if i could get something out of your workshop that i can apply in my life okay so stuff happens to everybody in everybody lives <laughs> <laughs> so that's yes. then everybody wants to understand okay good yeah you, all right so friends i think uh, yeah so still some more yes rajit ji uh, yes ji i am revati uh, uh, madam we cannot see your face do you do you mind to adjust the webcam because we can see your forehead but not your face uh, my name is revati okay I am from Auroville. Auroville, yes, madam. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I know according to Bhagavad Gita, there is a karma yoga and karma sannyas yoga, uh, and uh, so practicing. But uh, I want to know like more into like uh, the practical view and interesting about that as well. Okay, so you want to know about karma yoga. Uh, yeah what is the karma according to you what you are going to say like uh, the karma mm, okay. karma yoga and karma sanyas yoga i know like both and sometimes practicing and sometimes uh, like a kind of a little tricky mm. okay so you already know some things and you just want to uh, see if there is okay. anything you can understand yeah. a deeper yeah okay yeah please thank, right. you. thank you thank you thank you everybody okay so please take this opportunity we'll go for another couple of minutes if you want to share because it is very important we reflect upon what are we looking for anybody else if nobody then we'll start uh, uh, please please uh, <clears throat> oh lucy again yes, okay lucy. Yes. and uh, i'd like to to know if my um, um if my karma now i can stop it for a future life okay so can you stop if your in karma this life, in this life my english is not i i don't use speak english and no, the, you speak good lucy good. I, wanted Go ahead, to, i wanted to hear that and the, if in this life uh, i can stop all the the bad things Uh, of karma for my future life or or if my karma now is for other life uh, okay, i so don't know if you uh, i understand you want to take care of your future lives if the, so, is there a karma who has to be for all the other life or is there a karma who can stop in this life okay all right understood thank you thank you so we'll we'll discuss all these friends so how this workshop is going to go forward is through interactions so there will be some presentation and then there will be question answers and there will be a little bit of meditation and then again there will be presentation so we are going to do it for two days today and tomorrow karma is a very uh, it's a topic which needs to understand in depth and uh, the only way you can understand deeper is through examples and uh, by asking questions so we are going to discuss more case studies also today and tomorrow so there will be case studies there will be examples and there will be question and answer sessions along with a uh, theoretical aspect so it's going to be quite interesting so let us begin let me share the screen and uh, i'm sure all of your questions will be addressed So let me share my screen. Okay, there you go. So is everybody able to see the screen? Yes. Yes, Pradeep, it is clear. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. So karma and reincarnation. These both are 
linked together. So if you want to understand karma, you can understand karma when you understand reincarnation as well. So these two laws, there are six spiritual laws. The law of consciousness, law of reincarnation, law of karma, law of constant progression, and uh, what's the first one? Law of karma, law, uh, first is law of consciousness, law of karma, law of reincarnation, and the fourth is uh, speedening up the progress, law, law of hastening the progress, and uh, then there is a law of uncertainty, and there is law of infinity. So there's six spiritual laws. And among the six spiritual laws, the law of karma and the law of reincarnation, these two laws are fundamental laws one has to understand once for all. And the more you understand these two laws, the more you are helping yourself in your spiritual journey. So the agenda, what is the agenda? What is, what is that we are going to discuss? So we'll discuss about the law of karma, the dynamics of karma, and the karma categories. What are the categories of karma and the intensities of karma? And again, we'll discuss about reincarnation, pre-birth planning, karmic agreements, karmic debts. So we have karmic agreements, we have karmic debts. So we're going to understand all those things. And finally, we are going to integrate. After understanding all these things, what are we going to do with our understanding? Because we all want to understand karma so that we can integrate in our day-to-day -day life. Any understanding, whatever you learn, if you are not integrating in your day-to-day -day life, there is no use in it. So it's just a theory. A theory doesn't help you. So how to integrate, how to deal with your karma and how karma and enlightenment is interrelated. And in other words, how can you uh, make your present situation uh, a better experience? How can you deal with your present uh, challenges without any suffering? Yes, pain is there. Suffering is also there. Pain is inevitable, but suffering is a choice. So the more and more you integrate the law of karma, the more the suffering goes away. So this is the agenda of today's topic, my dear friends. And first, what is karma? Karma is a Sanskrit word, which simply means action. And some people think action means only the physical action. No, action refers to what we feel, what we think, and what we speak all relates to action. So what, it, what does the law of karma fundamentally say is it's a very simple law. It's a very profound law. What you do comes back to you. So that is the, the law. For every cause, there is an effect. For every effect, there is, an, there is a cause. So what you do has its repercussions. And again, what you face back has its own cause going back again. So that's why you say karma is like a loop, right? And it's very simple. Whatever you give, it comes back. It can be your thoughts, it can be your feelings, it can be your words, or it can be your actions. Whatever it is, it comes back to you. You think positive, positive will happen in your life. You feel negative, negative will happen in your life. You do positive, positive will happen. So in other words, whatever you do, it comes back. In the, so you have to be aware of your thoughts. You have to be aware of your feelings. You have to be aware of your words, which comes out of your mouth. And you have to be aware of your actions. And all are interrelated. That is the law. Whether you like it or not, whether you accept it or not, whether you understand it or not, whether you believe it or not, doesn't matter. The law takes its own course. So that's why it's called, it's a law, you know, like we have many, many physical laws on the planet Earth. For example, law of gravity, law of gravity exists, whether you believe it or not, whether you understand it or not, it doesn't matter, it exists. But the more you understand it, the more you get the benefit out of it. Similarly, this law of karma is a beautiful spiritual law. So the more you understand this law, the more you get the benefit out of it. And what are the types of karmas? So broadly, you can say there are two types of karmas, good karma and bad karma. So what defines a good karma and what defines a bad karma? Very simple. 
whatever is your action when i say action you have to understand action composes of your thoughts your words your feelings and your actions your physical actions everything comes under actions so the definition is very simple any action which you perform it benefits another life form that is a good karma and any action you perform it harms another life form it's a bad karma as simple as that now what are the consequences of good karma and bad karma in simple terms the more you have we all have good both good karma and bad karma we all have account it's like a bank account you have a debit and you have a credit you know it's like a simple account so we all have done many many bad karmas in many many past lives knowingly or unknowingly it doesn't matter so sometimes we do uh, a bad karma unknowingly it still doesn't matter it goes to your account and sometimes you do a good karma unknowingly uh, knowingly it doesn't matter it goes to your good karma account so if you have more good karma then the results are in the in the blessings the form of a good health a good relationship good finances everything so the good karma results in the blessings of your day to day life and the bad karma results in suffering the suffering can be your health your ill health your poor relationships business failures disasters accidents everything so on so forth so these are the results of the the bad karma now what determines your actions why people behave in a certain way why people think in a certain way why people speak in a certain way why some people are negative why some people are positive what determines one's own actions so there are two factors which determines your actions the first is the vasanas and the second is the maturity of the soul let us understand a little detail about what is this vasanas this vasanas are the inherent nature which we bring from our past lives it is the residue it is the residue from our past lives we are bringing in for example if you were uh, for example if you were uh, a king in your past life so in the present life even though you are not a king you, neither you have a kingdom but you still feel that you are your feeling will be like more like you are superior you are authoritative your feelings will be more like a king even though you are not a king in this lifetime it is because of vasanas these vasanas are the personality the residues of your personalities from your past life your personality traits from your past lives okay the similarly for example if you were um, if you were a, a slave in one of your past lives so in this life even though you are not a slave you are an independent being but still you will have the traits of being a slave you will not be confident in life you always feel that somebody is overpowering you you always feel you are helpless so these are the traits you are getting from your past lives because in one of the lives you take in that personality and the vasanas the residues come from that so that's re- that's the reason some of uh, we all behave in a certain way we all speak in a certain way so this is called vasanas and the other aspect of vasanas is because this residue produces the thought this residue inside you produces the thought and this thought leads to the desires and that desires leads to your actions so this is all interrelated in this way and the second most important aspect why people uh, are behaving or speaking in a certain way or actions in a certain way is according to the maturity of the soul so you see like we all take average of 400 to 450 lifetimes from the time we have incarnated for the first time on the planet earth till we complete the cycle on the planet earth and we become enlightened and we exit the planet earth cycle of life and death so from the first lifetime till the lifetime of enlightenment where you have come out of the cycle of life and death so an average 
this is an average it is not written on the rocks it is just an average figure some people take 200 lifetimes some people take 50 lifetimes some people take 1000 lifetimes but the average is 400 to 450 so during these lifetimes the soul goes through many many experiences the soul takes many many uh, uh, challenges many many situations and the more the experiences the soul goes through the more the soul learns so the more the soul is learning the more the soul is progressing the more the soul is graduating so like we have the age for the physical body we also have the age for the soul the soul who has just incarnated the soul who has just incarnated just only once or twice or thrice you know very few incarnations so we call it as a infant soul and after many many incarnations after many many challenges many many lessons the soul graduates to the next level the baby soul and next it graduates to the next level young soul and then to the next level a mature soul and then to a next level a old soul and then to the next level a transcendental soul and finally the soul uh, completes the cycle of birth and death so once the soul completes the cycle of birth and death there is no compulsion for the soul to come back because the karma is finished so once the karma is finished then there is no necessity for the soul to come back but the soul can choose to come back as a teacher so that is out of choice so we have two things karma and free will karma is related to destiny and free will relates to the our soul evolution so two aspects my dear friends the first aspect is destiny destiny is related to your karma and the second aspect is the free will your free will relates to your soul evolution your capacity to we all have free will everybody has free will but because of the burden of the karma we don't know how to use the free will but a person who is mature who understands life he knows how to use the free will so destiny is there free will is also there so i will discuss in detail at a later stage about this but first to understand the maturity of the soul and how it is related to our actions in the beginning stages in the beginning stages of infant soul baby soul young soul the soul inevitably does more and more bad karmas why the soul does more bad karmas because in the beginning stages of the soul evolution the soul is focused on power the soul is focused on survival the soul is focused on conquest domination authority so when the soul's focus is in these areas then naturally it leads to a lot of bad karmas if you are focusing on power conquest authority then you are you will end up in more and more bad karmas and as the soul progresses the soul understands what to do what not to do so with the maturity the soul focuses shifts the focus to one's emotions you know emotion i need to feel good i need to do good things i want i want to be a happy person right i want to lead a meaningful life so the soul focuses more on emotions so when the soul focuses more on the emotions then the soul starts repaying back all the negative karma the soul has to repay the negative karma and once the soul starts repaying the negative karma then there is a balance and more the balance happens the more the soul is graduating to towards enlightenment so these are the two factors my dear friends the vasanas and the maturity of the soul this determines uh, the basis of our actions now let us also understand what are our our daily actions every day in our day to day life there are many actions we do unconsciously and let us understand what are the day to day activities which contribute towards the bad karma unconsciously or consciously it doesn't matter but karma is a karma so the first is our food intake so most people on the planet earth they are not aware of this aspect they consume the food of pain and suffering so when you are consuming the food of pain and suffering so what does that mean that means what you do comes back to you 
So if you are butchering an animal, if you are terrorizing an animal, if you are giving suffering and pain to an animal or a bird or a fish, to any living being, you are giving pain and you are taking that food, the food of the blood you are taking in. So the suffering is come, going to come back to you. This is the law. What you give comes back to you. So our food intake has to be very sattvic or it has to be uh, based on gratitude and compassion. So the food which is based on gratitude and compassion is a plant-based food. The plants produce the food, but they never consume the food. They produce it for the others. With a lot of compassion, with a lot of gratitude, the plants produce the food for the birds, for the animals, and for the humans to consume. All the plant-based food is the food of gratitude from the trees, from the nature. So when you consume that food, so you are radiating that vibration back. And when you're consuming the food of pain and suffering, your life will be full of pain and suffering because what you give comes back. Every time you are eating meat, you are contributing. You are directly contributing to the suffering and to the violence and to the killing of the animal kingdom. So because you are giving that, that is going to come back to you in your life. And there is no room for discussion here, my dear friends. It is the topic of karma should not be understood from the mind. The topic of karma should be understood from the heart. If you want to understand this about the food aspect, the only way is experiment. I was a meat eater by birth. I used to eat a lot of meat because I was born in that family. But after I came into meditation, I naturally became vegetarian. I became vegetarian because my consciousness shifted. My awareness increased. The more I did meditation, the more my awareness increased. The more my awareness increased, the more I can take clear choices. What I want, what I don't want. So I became a vegetarian very naturally. And when I became a vegetarian, that's when I understood the beauty of this law. Before I used to think, you know, eating meat is part of the food cycle. You know, the goat eats the grass and we eat the goat and then we go back to the soil and then from the soil, the plants come again. It's like, you know, we thought it's a food cycle. Everything is part of the ecosystem. This is what I studied in the school. This is what they taught me that everything is part of the food cycle. But my meditation bring me, brought me the awareness. And because of my awareness, I became vegetarian. And after I became vegetarian, I understood the beauty of karma. How I understood the beauty of karma? Because before I was having a lot of fears. I was not confident in my life. And uh, I used to have so many fears. A fear of survival, fear of unknown, fear of the future, fear of uncertainty, and fear of uh, the relationships, and fear of non-acceptance. And there are so many fears inside me. And because of that fears, I couldn't able to express my potential. Whatever is my potential, my soul potential, is never expressed. And uh, the life was a struggle. But when I, when I became a vegetarian, I noticed in six months time, all my fears started coming down bit by bit, step by step, my, all my fears started coming down and I started becoming more confident in life. I started trusting life. You have to understand, my dear friends, the opposite energy of fear is trust. Where there is fear, there is no trust. Where there is trust, there is no fear. So the opposite energy of fear is trust. So ever since I became a vegetarian, I started noticing, I started trusting life. I started trusting in myself. I started trusting God. So I, I started trusting whatever happens, happens for good. So this is the beauty I realized and then I understood, wow, what a beautiful law, this law of karma. What you give comes back. So if you want to understand how your food impacts you, how your food impacts your current life, how your food impacts your soul evolution, you have to do an experiment. So my suggestion would be just do an experiment for one month, for one month, don't consume any food which is of pain and suffering and just experiment consciously 
consciously make a choice that I am not going to consume the food which comes out of fear, suffering, and blood. Consciously make a choice just for one month, and you will notice that your life is no more the same. Your fears are reduced, and you started trusting life more and more. This very simple experiment will reveal the truth. So, this is my sincere request, my dear friends. So, this transforms your life. This transforms your life because you have understood karma. If you really want to understand karma, you have to do this experiment. And then the other, the other aspect uh, the people do in their day-to-day -day life is interference. They interfere in others' affairs. Interference is in the form of criticism, judgment, nosiness. So we all judge consciously or unconsciously others. We all criticize others. And we poke into others' affairs. Nosiness is poking into other affairs, others' affairs. So when you do that, it comes back to you. The more you criticize, the more you will be criticized. The more you judge others, the more you will be judged. And it is the karma. What you give comes back. As simple as that. And let us go through a little bit of understanding what is criticism. Criticism is imposing your will upon others. Why do somebody criticize? What is the very nature of criticism? Is you are trying to force your opinion on others by saying what you have done is bad, what you have done is good. You should not do that way. You should not do this way. So that is criticism. And getting others to act the way you want them. Whatever might be the motive, you, there, there might be hidden motives also why you are criticizing. So whenever you are criticizing, that means there is no acceptance. So when there is no acceptance from your side, then you cannot expect you cannot expect acceptance from others from around you from your surroundings so you have to understand this what you give comes back and again nosiness nosiness is a way to collect information we we always interfere in others affairs by nosiness we collect the information of others we are more eager to see uh, you know to, what is the others information like failures what are the other failures what are they doing what are they doing because this is more of gossip this is more of poking your nose into others affairs for your own personal benefit because people feel people feel so happy that they see another person uh, not doing well in their life they get a, some kind of satisfaction because that is the negative radiation they have so when they have that attitude they are again attract more and more negativeness so we have to reflect upon ourselves. So the most important aspect is we have to reflect upon ourselves. What am I doing? So to reflect upon ourselves, we need more awareness. And how this awareness comes is through meditation. So let me go to that part later. First, let us understand the very basics of karma. Again, good karma. How do we lead? Uh, a life, a day-to-day -day life where we make sure we do more and more good karma is to live a life of non-violence. You know, this is the teachings of Jesus Christ. This is the teachings of Buddha. This is the teachings of all the enlightened masters. All the major religions, they spoke about compassion. They spoke about non-violence. Because if you live a harmless life, your life will not be harmed. If you live a life of kindness, your life will be full of kindness. So this is the fundamental aspect of every major religion. But all the major religions are misunderstood. All the major religions are misunderstood because they don't understand this law of karma. Jesus spoke about this karma. Jesus spoke very clear. What you sow, sow you reap. Whatever you sow, you will reap that. If you sow an apple seed, you will get an apple tree. You will never get any other tree. Whatever you have sown, you will get only that. Sowing an apple tree, you cannot expect, sowing an apple seed, you cannot expect a mango tree. It is impossible. This is what Jesus said. As you sow, so you reap. You want good things in life, then you have to do good things. You have to seed all the good things in your life. 
This is what Jesus spoke. The greatest truth from an enlightened master. As you sow, so you reap. So shall you reap. And no interference, no complaints, no gossip. If you are gossiping and if you are complaining, that means you are not understanding the bigger picture. If you complain against somebody, that means you don't understand the bigger picture. When you don't understand the bigger picture, then there is complaint. So your inability to understand the bigger picture leads to criticism and to gossip and to complain. So when you do that, you are going to get that back. So in essence, non-interference. So how do you get this non-interference? You get this non-interference as you evolve, as your soul evolves, as you understand the spiritual laws, then you understand that I should not interfere. I should not interfere because I don't want any interference from the others. You see, whatever we do is for ourselves. Isn't it? Whatever we do is for ourselves. Why should we meditate? It's for our evolution. Anything you do, whether it is earning it, it is for earning money, going to a job, or marriage, or children, anything you do is for your own self. Superficially, you might say, I'm doing it for others, but the deep down, it is for yourself. Even when you do service, even when you do service, people say, oh, I'm doing service because I want to help others. I want to, I want to make sure the others are getting benefited. Yes, the others get benefited. But why you want to do? You want to do because it gives you joy. Eventually, it gives you joy. Serving others gives you joy. So that's why you are doing it. So everything comes back to us, my dear friends. So even why am I taking this session? Why do I get, what do I get? I get a great joy. When I'm doing this session, I get joy. My soul is in joy. So that's why I'm doing it. So in turn, what it means fundamentally means we have to be responsible for our actions. The taking responsibility, this is the key word, my dear friends. You have to underline this word, responsibility. Karma is equal to responsibility, taking the responsibility. The more you take responsibility for your own life, the more you take responsibility for every situation in your life, then you, you can understand the karma to the depth of it. If you don't take responsibility, then there is always a blame game. I'm suffering because of him. I'm suffering because of her. I'm suffering because of the situation. I'm suffering because of the environment. I'm suffering because of the financial struggle. I'm suffering because somebody else is misunderstanding me. So when you try to put the blame on others, when you don't take the responsibility for yourself, then suffering is inevitable. But when you take the responsibility, then you come out of the suffering. So how to take responsibility? You take the responsibility by understanding the truth. What you give, comes back to you. If you are happy in your life, you created that reality. You are happy because you gave happiness to others. You are, you are living a harmonious life. You are living a happy life. So when you are living a harmonious, happy life, that is what you will feel. That is what you will get it back. That's what the society will give you back. That's what the whole of the universe will give you back. And if you are not happy, and if you are suffering, and if you are going through lot of hardships. You created that reality. That is also the truth. Your suffering is your responsibility. Your happiness is your responsibility. If you understand this fundamental fact, then you are enlightened. So today's uh, discussion and tomorrow's discussion is in this direction, is in this aspect of how to take responsibility how to understand. The more understanding gives us the clarity. Understanding gives us the clarity. And the clarity empowers us to take responsibility. So that is the equation, my dear friends. Understanding is equal to clarity. Clarity is equal to your willpower to take the responsibility. And as I said, we have two things, destiny and free will. Some people ask me, 
is some people say karma exists. Some people say, no, karma doesn't exist. What is the truth? Does karma exist or karma doesn't exist? Truth is always paradoxical. Yes, karma exists. At the same time, karma doesn't exist. How? Karma exists for the people who don't understand karma. Karma exists. And for the people who understood karma and who know how to use the free will, then because of the free will, they come out of the karma. So karma is there. That means destiny is also there. Free will is also there. So for the question, does karma exist? Yes, karma exists. Karma exists for the people who are not yet enlightened. Very simple. Karma exists for all the people who are not yet enlightened. Not enlightened means they are not in the truth yet. And karma doesn't exist for the people who are already enlightened. Karma doesn't exist because their actions are in alignment with the divine. So when your actions are in alignment with the divine, there is no karma. So now let us understand a little bit about free will. What is free will? We all have free will. Everybody has free will. Free will is your choice, your ability, your capacity to exercise your choices. We have infinite choices in front of us. In every given situation, we have infinite choices. But for the person who is stuck in karma, he cannot see the choices. Because of his own karma, he cannot see the choices. There is a blocks he cannot see. But the more you work on your karma, the more you can see the choices. Or just with understanding, with very understanding, and just by doing meditation, you raise your awareness. When you raise your awareness, you can see the choices. So meditation gives you, helps you to exercise all your choices. So that's where meditation helps. So if somebody asks, okay, karma is there. I don't know what I have done in my past lives. Yes, I might have done many, many wrong things in my past lives. But what are the options in front of me now? Do I have to suffer? Do you have to continue suffering? No, you don't need to continue suffering. You have a choice. You can use your free will to overcome your destiny. Yes, free will overpowers the destiny. You, we all have destiny, but the free will overtakes the destiny. The, the free will has the final say. So how to use that free will? Is The answer is meditation. So if you ask the question, is there anything I can do today? Yes, you can do. And what you need to do is raising your awareness, understanding the fundamental aspect of life and understanding the truth. So when you understand the truth, when you are in alignment with the truth, then you can burn your karma. You don't need to go through suffering. And the most important fact, my dear friends, karma is not punishment. So many people, they think karma is punishment, but no, karma is not punishment. Karma is a beautiful tool. It is a beautiful tool which helps us to learn soul evolutions, to learn the soul lessons. So the more you learn the lessons, the more the evolution happens. So the first, the foremost thing we have to understand about the karma is karma is not a punishment. It is a beautiful tool which helps us in our soul evolution. So what you do comes back. You do anything bad, bad comes back. When the bad comes back, you understand how painful it is, how hurting is it. So once you experience the pain, then you don't want to do the pain. You don't want to give the pain to others. So you learn not to give pain. You see, because of that particular action, you have given the pain. The pain came back to you because of karma. And because the pain came back to you, you understood that, that is not what you should give to others because you already experienced the pain. You know how painful it is. Because you know how painful it is, you don't want to give it to anybody. So that has empowered you into compassion and that has helped you to evolve. So every 
challenge we face in our life is because of karma. And every challenge helps us to learn a lot of lessons. So karma is not a punishment. So karma is there to help us to learn the lessons. So this is a very important aspect. So the main difference between, again, when it comes to the free will, the main difference between the humans and animals is animals, they live by instincts. Animals, they live by instincts. When they are hungry, they eat. They don't mind. They, they kill another animal, they eat. Because that is their instincts. And they, every action, whether it is reproduction, whether it is their sex, or whether it is survival, everything is instincts. They follow their own animal world order. But the humans, no. The humans have the free will. The humans have the ability to discern. The humans have the ability to contemplate what is good and what is bad. And the humans have the free will and the animals don't have the free will. Because the humans have the free will, the humans have karma and the animals don't have karma. So that is a major difference. So again, the souls have free will on the physical plane. The souls can postpone their karma and not to create new karma for the future when they appropriately know how to handle the karma they can uh, either postpone the karma or they can take up the challenge and they can learn the lessons so they have both the choices the free will on the soul is there and uh, once all your karmic accounts are balanced all the bad karmas are neutralized, then you are out of the karmic loop. So, as I told you, the misconception of a karma is, it's a key to liberation. If you want to liberate yourself, it is a key. So it's just like a mirror. You can see the, the baby monkey is looking into the mirror and what the baby monkey is seeing is the reflection of its physical. Similarly, if you see why there are certain challenges, why you attract certain people in your life, especially the relationships. Relationships are a major indicator. What relationship you have with yourself and what relationship you have with others, that is a reflection of you. And when you, when you are able to see that reflection with awareness, then that becomes the key for your liberation. Because if you can able to see, this is not what I want then what you want, you do that. See, there are two aspects. Again, for karma, there are two aspects. What you don't want, don't give it to others. What you don't want, don't give it to others. And what you want, you have to give it to others first. So this is the law, my dear friends. So you don't want suffering, so don't give suffering. So if you don't give suffering, suffering will not come back to you. Yes, but you want happiness, you want peace. So you have to do that first, give that first. If you want good friendship, you have to be a good friend first. Unless you are a good friend first, you cannot have good friendship. We all want loving relationships. So if you want loving relationship, you be a loving partner, you be a loving person first, then you receive back. So the Two aspects to understand the karma is what you don't want, don't give. But what you want, you give it first. Because when you give it first, again, the law of karma takes its course. What you give comes back. So this is the way to understand, friends. So again, there are categories of karma. Sanchita, Prarabdha, Kiyamana are Agami. So there are three categories of karma. Sanchita means past, prarabdha means current, and kiyamana or agami is future. What is Sanchita? Sanchita is, it's like a reservoir. It's a reservoir of all the karmas you have done in all your past lives, from the time you have incarnated for the first time, 
till this moment, from the time you have incarnated, the very first time, until this moment, whatever the karma you have done, both positive and negative, it's all a it's in a reservoir. It is called Sanchita. And Prarabdha means before the soul is born, the soul chooses, I want to take this much karma into the present life because the soul cannot take all the negative karma of all the lives. Then it will be a disaster. The soul cannot sustain on the planet Earth. So the soul chooses according to its free will, the soul chooses this is the particular portion of the karma I want to bring into this present life. These are the lessons I want to learn in this lifetime. And for those lessons, I will bring this much of the karma from the Sanchita, from the reservoir, from your own reservoir, you bring a portion of it. You decide, you decide before you are born, you decide that this is the karma I bring into the present life. And that portion is called prarabdha. Prarabdha is something which is inevitable. It will happen because it is decided before you are born. That is your current lifetime karma. Nobody can do anything about it. It will happen. It will happen. The karma is going to manifest, but how you respond to it is again your free will. Okay. So first, Sanchita. Sanchita is all the reservoir. The second is the Prarabdha. The Prarabdha is what you have chosen to bring in this present life. And Kiyamana, the third category. So the Kiyamana means whatever the karma you do this moment, like you have brought in the Prarabdha and how you react to that particular karma, how you face to that particular karma becomes your future. How you handle a particular challenge in this present moment becomes Kiyamana. So if you have not handled it well, so it creates more bad karmas for the future. So that is Kiyamana. So Kiyamana is that something which is going to happen in the future because of your present actions. So that is Kiyamana. And there is another category called Agami. Agami means you understand the bigger picture of karma and you want to make sure that you want to create a beautiful for a beautiful uh, journey for the future. So because you want to create a beauty of, for, the, for your own future journey, you plan that and you do certain actions. So that actions you do for to plan for a better future, that is Agami. So in other words, Agami is your planning for your future. So you do it consciously. So that is Agami. So these are the categories of uh, karma, my dear friends. And uh, if you want to uh, go through a little bit of examples, then let me uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so let me go through the slides once again so that you can understand. So Sanchita, as I explained, is a sum of all karmas from all the lifetimes. And then Prarabdha is a portion of uh, Sanchita which you are bringing in. And uh, so whatever you bring in, that manifests as Prarabdha, manifests as destiny. Some people call fate and some people call destiny. That is inevitable. It happens to us. And because we brought in that Sanchita, our body-mind conditioning also is accordingly to that way. Okay, so why we behave in a certain way, why the actions are in certain way, why our thoughts are in certain way, our desires are in certain way is because of Prarabdha, because you have planned for it in this lifetime. And uh, Kiyamana, as I told you, how you are responding to your Prarabdha is your Kiyamana. And Agami is planning for your future. You use your free will, you exercise your free will to plan for your future. So that is Agama. An example would be, if you are doing serious meditation today, you will be a better human. So that's Agami, your actions. And if you're doing good things today, you know the good is going to come back. So friends, uh, 
I can go on a little bit, but first I want to consolidate whatever we have discussed till now. I want to consolidate and then we can go forward. So how to consolidate will be through uh, questions. So if you have any questions for the things we have discussed so far, because I'm going to share a lot of things, there is again an intensity of karma and there are more examples I'm going to give at a later stage. So you will understand more and more. But first I want to make sure uh, you have just understood what has happened so far, what has discussed so far. So let us uh, integrate step by step before we go to the, the next topic. So it's time for uh, the questions. If you have any questions so far, then I'm happy to take that questions. Yes, if somebody wants to ask questions, they can uh, raise their hands, Hi. they can unmute and then they can speak. Yes. Hi, Pradeep. Hi. This is Hi, good to speak now. Um, a very, very interesting, very interesting um, explanations you've done so far. And uh, um, I just want to, it just came something to my, to my awareness that um, same as you, I was, I was born in, in a family where we were meat eaters and, and through bringing more awareness to myself as well, I became something, something already was, was for me that meeting it was not quite good. So I became more just eating fish, but, but then I became even more aware of that pain and suffering from beyond animals. And I didn't want that for me either. So I became vegan. And, and that for me was working very well, but I got a conflict where I don't want any suffering from any being on this planet. So I don't, I don't want to participate in that. I don't want that in me. But on the other hand, my family, they are not. So I'm still buying products. They are you know, so, from animals, the suffering. So how, how, do you, how do you go around this, this sort of a conflict? Because I'm fully aware of that, but on the other hand, I cannot impose my will to them. So they have that will for themselves. So I don't know how to move. And, and I don't know how that um, actions that are aware from me, but aware also how bad it is when I buy for them. How, yeah, how I that understand. Yeah. I understand. So that's a, that's a very interesting question, Joe's. You see, first you have taken a very good step because you said that is in your experience as you raise your awareness, you stop uh, eating meat first and then you stopped eating fish. So that's, uh, that's a very important realization you have gone through. But the question you asked is also a very important question. You see, according to karma, especially when it comes to the food habits, there is a statement given by Krishna in Bhagavad Gita. So, in a sense, what the statement is, the person who abets, the person who abets, the person who kills, the person who trades, the person who buys, the person who cooks, the person who serves, and the person who eats, all are part of the same karma. You see? So, yes, you are not eating meat but you are paying money and buying it. So that is going to come back to you. And you might say, or some people might say, I have become vegetarian. I'm not eating, but I'm just cooking for my husband. Still you are part of the karma. And somebody says, I'm not cooking. I'm just buying from the restaurant. and I'm just feeding my children. Again, part of the same karma. So you have to understand the wholeness of it. The reason why you are a vegetarian is not because it is bad. The reason is you have become so sensitive that you should not be the reason for the suffering. Now, if that is clear, then the choices are very clear. In my case, when I became a vegetarian, my family members are still eating meat. So how I handled is very simple. I said, I choose to be a vegetarian out of my own choice. But at the same time, I'm not going to impose 
my awareness. I'm not going to impose my awareness on others. So I explained my family members why it is important to be a vegetarian. So for me, it is my duty to explain my loved ones why I have become a vegetarian. I've explained scientifically, I've explained spiritually. And I said, it is your free choice. You do what you want to do, but I won't be part of it. And I stopped eating, I stopped buying, I stopped even serving. When I go to restaurants with my friends, and if somebody, if I'm treating my friend, and if my friend is ordering anything which is not plant-based food, I won't pay the bill. I make sure I don't pay the bill even if somebody is ordering, even if I asked my colleagues uh, as a guest to come for a restaurant, I won't pay for it. I'll explain them, it is not in my uh, dharma that I do this, sorry. So you can handle it in a very gentle way with understanding, with the understanding, the other person also will change when they realize the truth. So having this compassion and allowing the people to exercise their own free will, I took my stand. When it comes to, you see, this statement is a very beautiful statement I like. When it comes to opinions, when it comes to opinions, flow like a river. But when it comes to principles, stand like a rock. This is a statement by Swami Vivekananda. When it comes to opinions, flow like a river. Different people have different opinions. Just flow, don't be rigid. But when it comes to principles, your own principles, stand like a rock. So I hope I answered your question. Jos, are you there? You are on the mute, we can't hear you if you're speaking. Anyway, I think uh, I think you will come back. Hi. Yeah, you get back, okay. For some reason, sorry, I was trying to. Yeah, you, you did explain quite, quite nicely. Well, it's just, uh, I know, I know, it may sound like excuse, but it's on the practical level, it sometimes it's, it's a bit difficult because the, until it's, they make it is difficult. It is difficult. Yeah. it is difficult because that is a test. That is a test for you. It is a difficult choice, but are yeah. you willing to take the difficult choice is a test for your soul evolution. And the free choice is yours. True, 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 <laughs> true. True. Um, you know, when, when I when it first that happened at the beginning, I was very, very conscious about it. And I was the same as you said, I was not buying anything, I was not paying for anything. But that brought a lot of a conflict into the relationships. And, and at some point, I have to think about, well, am I imposing my views to them in a way? Or, you know, but I, I always had this conflict about because I was very aware about the whole thing. And, and so, and even though, as you said, it's like, I'm not eating it but i'm contributing to the suffering by paying by buying by cooking by all that so yeah probably i think that bringing more awareness to to my environment and, and be more clear about that and, and it probably will help a bit more but uh, yeah it was very 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 clear the way you explain it and it makes uh, makes more sense to be honest so thank you okay thank you thank you jos and uh... I'll just let me share this uh, example. In my journey, when I took a very firm stand with my family, when I took a very firm stand, initially they were upset with me. And when they're upset with me, I was still having the understanding that they have every right to get upset with me. So I understood them. So that understanding helped me to focus on my principles and uh, for one month two months three months they're upset and the fourth month they came in terms with me because i started respecting their free will i'm not imposing anything but i've taken a very clear choice so they started accepting me and i think in in three years time my entire family members they become vegetarian 
because one day my mother she asked me i'm going through so much of uh, tension and stress in my life but how come you are so cool and relaxed all the time because she used to share something with me and i like okay that's your challenge you handle it and she was like this is very how can you be so cool and relaxed all the time when she asked after 3 years i told her because i meditate and if you want to be cool and relaxed you also meditate and you will also be cool and relaxed she said really is it possible is it possible i let go of all my problems i said yes possible why don't you make an experiment so she did this experiment so she started meditating sincerely and uh, she started uh, becoming vegetarian because she wants to experiment so she became vegetarian and she started meditating and she realized the truth and now she is teaching meditation to others so this is how you inspire so every challenge gives an opportunity our action, our actions uh, should be an inspiration for others when you take a very firm stand when you take a really firm stand i am sure your loved ones will understand you they will understand you because they are your loved ones and if they don't understand you then you know what is the truth thank you jos okay so next question anybody? hello ah uh, yes yeah hi hi pradeep ji uh, this is nirzari here uh, everything you said really kind of uh, hit home uh, because you explain it very well and somewhere i have been reading a uh, few uh, scriptures like gita i would say uh, there is something that i have come across which is uh, so probably is it's a part of western philosophy or you know some adaptation of gita in the western philosophy which is called law, law of grace you know and many teachers say that you know the grace supersedes karma i mean that is what i have read uh, in few books so mm-hmm. if you can explain that you know like in some some of the books it's transcription that you know once you uh, go beyond the cycles of karma you know there is something called as grace which and even when you are here you know like experiencing everything when you accept everything you know that's grace so i mean if you can just you know um, highlight on that part you know how to come out of the cycles of karma as in uh, you know where you are not no longer a part of this repeated karmic cycles you know how to reach okay. there how to reach grace okay so probably a part of your question about the grace and how to come out of the karma will come in the later cycles about when you understand uh, more about the intensities with case studies and with pre birth planning you will understand that part but let me share okay. this part uh, with regards to uh, i want to share a couple of experiences uh, hmm. i had because i travel around and i meet uh, many spiritual teachers around the world mm. and uh, i there is this uh, understanding uh, some some people they understand that whatever you do you do it out of uh, grace right there is no karma yeah. right you know for example you know there was this uh, i was i was having this uh, beautiful friend from uh, australia in gold coast and uh, we were having a, just going for a dinner for the first time and uh, she ordered something in the menu uh, i was a bit surprised that uh, she was ordering a uh, fish and i was so shocked because she is a spiritual teacher she speaks about love she speaks about love she teaches about love and uh, i was so shocked and uh, i just asked okay what is this it is there is no uh, right your actions doesn't reflect of uh, who you are so then uh, she said uh, yes i of course i know uh, killing animals are bad of course i know it so that's why i bless the food before i eat it okay. so she orders a plate of chicken she orders a plate of chicken and she say she is blessing that chicken so, so that she feels that it's absolutely okay there is no karma because she has radiated her grace and she has blessed the food so it's absolutely okay to eat that meat 
and i was like okay so this this is how the people are this is how the mind plays the role so the mind is very very cunning so the mind says okay killing is fine pain is fine suffering is fine as long as you can bless it everything is okay so then okay. so then i asked her is it okay if i kill you now and bless you <laughs> i simply asked is it okay i kill you now and of course i'll bless you after i killed you so why to kill in the first place and why to bless it so this is the nature of the mind so yeah. one has to be aware how the mind plays the role that that's why i said in the beginning if you want to understand the topic of karma you have to understand by heart not by mind if you understand by mind it will mislead you if you understand by heart it will guide you your own inner voice from your heart will guide you in the right direction so this is one such example and there are many many examples i can give how the mind plays a role so coming back of using the grace the grace is something which radiates from within you not just by lip service if somebody is saying grace it doesn't mean it's graceful if somebody speaks love it doesn't mean there is love it should radiate from the very being jesus christ was full of grace he was it full of grace because that is what he radiates it's not because what he speaks it is because what he radiates it is because of his actions when he was put on the cross and when he is getting crucified even in that moment when people are crucifying him he said oh lord please forgive them they don't know what they are doing so he is still not judging the people they he asked for forgiveness for the people who are putting the nails he said please forgive them they don't know what they are doing oh lord please forgive them they don't know what they are doing so that is the grace so the grace is something which radiates not something which comes when you speak so uh, i think you understand so yeah, for a person so for a person who radiates grace yes there is no karma there is no karma because that person is in alignment with the divine he is in alignment with the truth gotcha. so when you are in alignment with the truth divine is equal to truth when you are in alignment with the truth there is no karma okay yeah thank, thank you. you so much thank you yeah thanks so who is next uh shilpa here can i go ahead yes yes shilpa yeah uh my question is on um, non interference uh wherein you mentioned uh complaining criticizing all this comes under that Yeah. so uh i would like to uh, give a situation which i usually come across and want to know how how better i can uh, respond to it uh i wouldn't want to unnecessarily criticize about what others are doing but if it is impacting me uh, for example uh, a person is speaking in a rude way to me and uh, i'm hurt and i need to uh share it with somebody just to make myself feel better up, so that i will not get stuffed up uh, yeah. and uh, it's a family member and i understand why that person is doing their challenges and their state of mind but still it does hurt me uh, so what is that i should do so that i don't uh, criticize or i don't complain uh, but still be able to uh, feel fine with whatever has happened okay and not carry that hurt feelings okay you see first is to take responsibility okay. you are going through a certain challenging situation yes accept it that nobody is responsible for this i am responsible i created this so that is the first step to take the responsibility and the second step is yes accepting that i am hurt so you can you can express you can express saying i am hurt but when you say you hurt me that is blaming 
you can express that I am hurt. You have all the free will. You have to express your emotions. You have to express, yes, I am. You, when you are sharing with your loved ones, when you say, I am going through this pain, I am suffering and I need to know what I need to learn and I need to know how I can come out of the suffering. So that is right. But when you are sharing that that person has given this trouble to me and because of him I'm suffering and because of her I'm suffering and because of the situation I'm suffering, then you are not taking responsibility. You're just putting a blame. And when you're putting a blame, then that goes into cycles and cycles and cycles because every challenge comes to you to learn something. So when you focus on the learning, then you come out of the karma. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. So who's next? There's another Sonia Kapasi. Uh, hi, Pradeep. Nice to see you again. Hi, Sonia. Um, Yes. So my question was, uh, one thing that I learned today was I have a new puppy and I'm buying, though I'm, we are all vegetarians, but I'm my, buying doggy food, which is of course meat. And uh, I have to see how I'm going to transition from my puppy from a non-veg to a vegetarian. So that's, that's my task for this year now. Um, so something that you just said, um, you said there's average 400 to 450 lifetimes, right? Which is when the soul matures. Now in this, there'll be all different. So there'll be human form, there'll be animal form. I Correct me if, if that's- No, 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 no. This 400 yeah. to 450 is after you take the human incarnation. Okay. So after the human incarnation. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but but uh, so in when you are in the animal form, that's not what it's counted because you can't build your karma if you are in an animal uh, form, right? Yes. You can't correct. do that, right? Yes. Animals oh. don't have karma. Yes. Yeah, that's that's something I just wanted to read. Animals, animals mm. in the wild mm. on their own, they mm. don't have karma. But you okay. are feeding you are feeding meat to the dog. Mm. The dog doesn't have karma because the dog is yeah. dependent on you. So the dog doesn't have the karma, but you have that karma. Yeah, that's something which I learned today. Yeah, so it's it's good. Okay, yeah. no, just and I want to give some examples. Hmm. Um, I have, I have uh, met a dog in, hmm. in Australia. It, uh, the dog is so huge. It's so huge and so, uh, you know, so strong. It's almost like a lion, so hmm. big. Uh, it was in the, one of the ashrams I went in Melbourne, in Hare Krishna Ashram, um, in the Great Ocean Road. So when I entered the ashram, you know, Hare Krishna people, they are known for their compassion and vegetarianism. So when I entered, so this, this, this dog, which came running towards me, and I was like a little bit uh, taken aback and just, uh, I was cautiously witnessing. And then immediately the owner of the property, he came, he stepped out of his car and he said, oh, he's such a loving being. His name is Beam. And, uh, you know, he will be around you in this property and he's very friendly. Uh, but just make sure uh, if you give any biscuits, which has egg, or if you give any meat, he will never come to you again. Wow. This introduction was, wow, really? And mm. uh, the dog is a vegetarian? He said, yes, from the birth, the dog is a vegetarian. And he wow. said, when the puppy is in, the, in her mother's womb, the mother is also vegetarian. So the dog was very sensitive towards this. And I have met cats which are vegetarian. So in the beginning, the, the, the masters were not vegetarian. I think this, yeah, sorry. So in the beginning, the masters were not vegetarian and they were feeding meat to the cats and the cats were also eating meat. But later on, uh, the masters, the owners of the cat, they become vegetarian. They transformed from within. They didn't become vegetarian for the sake of becoming vegetarian. They transformed from within and they became vegetarian and they started noticing the cats started eating what they were eating. The cats, the cats started eating fruits, the cats started eating lettuce and all the veggies. And so that is an indication the cat is saying, I'm also willing to change. So the pets normally follow the masters, but before they follow the masters, they give a challenge, they give a test. They give a test to really, really see the master has changed or not. So for example, you give uh, a meat, initially they might not eat, they might refuse, mm -hmm. but you stick on to the principle and you say, no, please understand. You can speak to them. You know, they are very, uh, the pet animals are very sensitive beings. So you can speak to them lovingly 
that this i don't want to do this please don't make me to do this i want to i want your help so if you can speak you see the wonders within few weeks they become vegetarian oh that's nice good to know thank you okay yeah. thank you right so any other questions we have before uh, we go to the next can topic? i nancy yes nancy um we good karma is generated by our uh, compassionate actions that benefits the whole universe benefit others generally others it can oh, be it can yeah. be the whole universe or it can be one person generally or the benefit. plants or the animals and yes. uh, my question is all people with miraculous mind and positive mind are continuously creating karma uh, dharma is karma. that dharma that's okay or it that's something different dharma 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 is different dharma is different uh, dharma means your soul duty okay so we'll see later right uh, yes of course we'll discuss uh, it later but i just want to give you this explanation uh, karma is action what you give comes back to you right it's a law karma is a law but dharma is another sanskrit word which means your soul duty okay so my dharma if my if my actions are in alignment with my soul duty then it is my dharma so dharma is my soul duty so my dharma is different from your dharma mm. okay so we all have a collective dharma as a planet earth we all have a collective duty so dharma is the duty we all have a collective duty but i have my own individual duty towards my children towards my family and towards my neighbors i have a dharma towards myself so dharma is your soul duty your mm -hmm. duty is your dharma okay. okay thank you yeah thank you you hi pradeep this is manikand sai yes hi manikand hi yeah i can see you now Oh, I'm sorry. I can. I'm not able to see you. I just have one thing to share with you. As you mentioned, the dog. You're talking about the dog one, which is so nice to you. Even in my experience, also I found one dog where uh, the family members used to treat like a dog as a family member. And what I found over the period of time, dog used to be so nice, not only with the family members but around the people. And over the period of time, what happened? The dog passed away. and the uh, family members cried like in anything so then uh, when we spoke to the family members that like they said like uh, we treated that dog like a family member and they, she never used to bark or never used to bite or shout on the other people she used to be very nice and we treated so well and it's like and we have four people have four sons and she is like a fifth uh, fifth person in my family so i never uh, felt like she will be uh, passed away so early but you know as ex explained to them uh, as you have taken the birth in this in this um, in this place so even the dog has also taken some good uh, dog has also taken the birth to remove that karma for example in the past uh, she might be some lady or the person she has done beautiful things in her life but has done some sort of in some mistakes but because of that maybe she or she was reborn as an animal now she was born or he he was born in a good family so she was treated very well in such a way like she will be very nice not only with your with you as well as the surrounding around so now you see the karma is over she has already left now she will be in a good health maybe she was born in a very different so scenario maybe as an animal or whatever it may be so but manikanta, when you what yeah. you learn from this what i learned from this when you treat before you go, any before, any uh, person can i just a minute before you go further there is uh, the fundamentally there is uh, some small uh, correction which needs because the human once the animal takes the life form of a human once the animal graduates into a human the law doesn't permit to go back so that's one of the spiritual laws the law of constant progression so that means there is no going backwards so there are three ways there are three ways a human incarnates on the planet earth so the first is for the graduation from the animal kingdom we have four kingdoms on the planet earth mineral kingdom plant kingdom animal kingdom 
and human kingdom. So the graduation, the evolution happens from mineral to plant, from plant, the consciousness graduates from plant kingdom to so mineral kingdom to plant kingdom and uh, plant kingdom to animal kingdom and animal to human. So that's one way where the souls graduate from animal to human. And in that process of graduation, the final, the final incarnations within the animal kingdom, they are the pets. They are like the dogs, the horses, the cows, the cats, the elephants. So these animals, it's almost their last lifetime. And the next incarnation is a human. So animals are part of the group soul. They don't have individual soul. So in their last, in their final lifetimes, they exhibit phenomenal friendship with the human. So when they exhibit phenomenal friendship, they understand sometimes they even understands the emotions of the humans, their masters. They understand, they pick up their emotions. So that is an indication that that is the last lifetime for that animal. And the next is a graduation to the human. Okay, so that's one thing. And the second, and the third aspects, how a human comes. The second aspect is after the human becomes enlightened, he becomes part of the source and he places a small speck of his own consciousness. Like, you know, when the adults become, when, uh, when the body becomes adult, they become eligible to reproduce, they give birth. Similarly, when the soul gets enlightened, they place a small speck of their consciousness onto the planet Earth as a human. So that is the second way the human comes. And the third way the human comes are the star seeds. So they are the people from the other dimension. They are the people from other realities. We have infinite uh, planets. We have infinite star systems in our entire cosmos. So they come on a mission. They come for their own uh, project work. So that is the third. The, this, the third category is called the star seeds. So these are the three ways the human gets incarnated on the planet Earth. So the, what you are referring to, your uh, example, is the case of the animal graduating to the human. So the next lifetime is a human. Okay. Um, Pradeep, we have some questions also on the chat. Shall, we also, shall I also go, go through them? Yeah, please. Yeah. So we have uh, Pradeep Doshi who is asking, can we neutralize some karma before they manifest? Uh, yes, I'll come to the topic later, but the answer is yes. Okay, so then we have uh, Bindu. She was asking, what about milk when we talk about food coming from animals? Can we consume it? Uh, if the milk is coming, uh, see the, the cows are very evolved, as I said. Why the cow is called a holy cow in India? Why the cow takes a very special place in India is because of the maturity of the cow within the animal kingdom. The cows are so mature. They have such intelligence. They have such maturity. They have such mature, uh, uh, sensitivity that they understand the human emotions. So traditionally in India, the cows are called the holy cows. And in the, in the olden days, every house used to have a cow in India. Every house, they used to have a cow and they have names for the cows. They treat the cow as part of the family member and they feed the cows, they take care of the cows, they bathe the cows and they look after it really well because it's sacred for them, it's part of their family. And when the cow gives birth, then it starts producing milk for the baby, primarily for the baby to consume. So the people in India traditionally they let the calf drink the milk first. Because if you don't let the calf drink the milk and straight away you go milking, the cow will kick you. So the cow will first give the milk to the calf. And once the cow gives the milk to the calf, then the cow stops the milk, stops the flow of the milk. And the cow kicks the calf. It says, enough, your quota is finished, enough. And then the cow produces the milk again out of gratitude for the master who has taken care of it. So that milk is the milk of love and gratitude. So when you consume that milk, that milk has a lot of gratitude and love and it, is, it has a lot of healing properties. That's why in Ayurveda, the cow's milk, 
uh, is part of medicine. Okay, so this kind of milk is really uh, medicinal because it is it is out of gratitude. But if you are speaking about the milk from the factory farming, like the cows are so tied up in the factories, it has gone through so much of cruelty and the baby is born, the baby is separated from the mother and it is thrown to the butcher and the, the baby is slaughtered in front of the cow and you are putting machines and you are sucking the milk, then that energy is pain and suffering and that milk is very, very bad. So it is all the choices you make. So if you know the source of the milk, then the milk is good. And if you don't know the source of it, make sure you do a little bit of research and that milk is good. That's very well put, Pradeep. We have uh, uh, Pankaj Bhargava. I will unmute. Yeah, Pankaj Bhargava, you can unmute yourself now. Uh, you have to unmute. We can't hear you. Hello. Okay. Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I do have a few couple of queries. I'm not really sure whether whether it's the right forum, but I as far I mean, if I, you're not if knowledge... you're not sure, please don't ask. <laughs> it is sort of related, but may, may not be totally related. But uh, it does come up because okay, one thing at a said... time. You please go one yeah. question at a time. Yeah. Thanks. Sure. Sure. So you had mentioned that you they sh you are not supposed to harm others. Not okay. supposed to. I mean, if you do, it will come back to you. <laughs> yeah, true, true. But what do you say say for a soldier whose duty to in the duty line of duty to protect his nation, he has to harm the enemy. So okay. how do what would that's, be your take on this? Okay, that's also a very good question. You see, every law has an exception. Mm -hmm. Every, the law is there, but every law has an exception. We don't speak about the exception, but we speak about the law. So the exception for this law of karma is, this is the exception. You don't harm others, but if others are trying to harm you, so for example, you, are, you don't kill animals, but a tiger is going to attack you, the tiger is going to kill you. So that moment, you have every right to kill back the tiger. So that is an exception. So that doesn't count under the karma. Okay. But the poor goat, the sheep or hen, they are happily playing and you go and kill them, that is karma. So similarly, if a soldier is in the border and he's defending and out of his defense, somebody is killing him and out of his defense, he is killing back. That con doesn't consider us uh, into the karma. He's doing his duty. But for his soul, for his soul, he has to understand that killing is no way. So that's why most of, the, most of the evolved souls, most of the highly evolved souls, they don't choose uh, that profession. But if the person is aware of it and conscious of it, and he's aware of the karma, and he says, I am not going to kill anybody, but if somebody is going to kill me, I'm going to kill him back. So then he has the right understanding of karma. Okay. Okay. And with regards to the grace, the uh, you had mentioned a certain example, right? So is it true that the highly spiritually evolved masters who are generally constantly present at a, in a very small volume, do they possess the powers to negate your karma? Okay. So this is again uh, a common question. Do the, do the spiritual masters can help you take a bit of your karma? Okay, so this also we'll discuss um, at a later part, but the answer is yes, it is possible, but only when the student has learned the lessons. You see, there is, you are asking about a teacher, and a student, like the student is going through a certain karmic things and can the teacher help the student? The answer is yes, it is possible and still no, answer is yes and no. So I will say how it is yes and how it is no. Okay. If you see the karma is there to 
teach you some lessons. Yes, do you agree to that? Yeah. So the very karma is to learn some lessons. And if you, if you didn't learn that lesson, then no teacher can help you. Mm -hmm. Because you didn't learn that lesson. No teacher, no real teacher, let me emphasize, no real teacher, no authentic teacher will help you. Because the teacher is fully aware that you need to learn that lesson and he won't interfere in your learning process. The teacher never will interfere in your learning process. So he will not help you in your karma. So in that way, it is no. But some people, out of their limited understanding, if they have some gifts and they think they can help others, mm -hmm. without understanding the bigger picture, they go try to help others. Like somebody is going through some illness, some headache or some cancer or something. So this person, because of their own gifts, if he's going to help them to heal just by putting, giving some energy and then taking out their problems. So that becomes an interference of then the learning process. So this person, this healer will get the karma of the person who is suffering to his karma. Because when you interfere in others karma, you will get the karma back into your account. So that's why in the highest uh, spiritual order, there is no healing. There is only self healing. Self healing okay. is perfect. And healing others is not permitted in the highest form of spiritual evolution okay. and yeah. now the other part when the teacher helps in taking the other karma suppose the student has already learned the lesson the student has already learned the lesson so when you already learn the lesson that means you are no more in the loop of the karma you see there are two things to understand in karma one is the loop. One is the karmic loop. And the other is the residue, the balancing factor. So the student has learned the lesson. So if the student has learned the lesson, then the purpose of the karma is finished. Because of that karma, he learned the lesson. So he is out of the loop of the karma. So he won't attract the same challenge again in his life because he learned the lesson, but still the residue is there. The residues of the karma is there. So the teacher can help the negate the residue of the karma only by 10%, not fully, only 10%. And that 10% goes a long way in the student's evolution. And when will the teacher help? The teacher will help when the teacher see the potential that this person is ready for the next evolution, next, ready for the next stage in his journey. But his residues, his karmic residues are tying him down. So when the teacher is absolutely confident, is absolutely sure that he is ready for the next stage in his spiritual progress, only then the teacher will help take the karma. And that too, not all the Sanchita Karma, no, only 10%. So that that 10% helps him to go to the next level in his spiritual journey. Now, here, what is the residue? I'll give you an example. A, a person A kills B. A person A kills a person B out of anger frustration or whatever. After killing the person, after A kills B, the karma is there for the A. So he will be getting killed by another person or from the same person. But the person has learned the lesson. After killing the person, the person realized it is a mistake that he shouldn't have done. So he realized it. He learned the lesson not to kill anymore. So once he learned the lessons, he's out of the loop of the karma. But still the residue is there. The residue is the suffering of the bee and his family members. So because of his killing, his wife and children has all suffered. 
So that is the residue of his karma. So he has to neutralize it. In other words, one act of negative karma has to be neutralized by one act of positive karma. So the more you do positive karma, the more you do good karma, the more it negates the residue of all your bad karma. Some people have this misunderstanding. The more I do good karma, the more the bad karma goes away. That is a wrong understanding. It is half truth and half truths are always dangerous. Every action you do, every karma you do, there is a lesson to be learned. And only when you learn the lesson, after you learn the lesson, the good karma helps you to take off the residue. And after you have learned the lesson and after you have neutralized the residue, then you are completely out of the karma. So all your good karmas helps you to neutralize the residues of the negative karma. But the first step is to learn the lesson. After you learn the lesson, then it helps. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Next question. Yeah, Pradeep, we have on the chat um, in regards with the healing. So no healing should be done without knowing anyone. Get along with you. Okay, nice. So uh, I'm unmuting now. Pradeep Doshi, you, you have your hand up. Yes, you can go ahead. No, um, my question is answered already. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, we have. Yes, Nishaji, you can unmute yourself now. Yeah. Yeah, yes, you can sir. talk. Uh, sir, as you said that uh, uh, it's an average of 400 to 450 lifetimes for a soul. So yes, how come... Average. How come it is decided uh, what is the number of lifetimes a soul has to take? Like yeah. for some it is very less and for some it is very large. Number. Yes. So it depends on uh, it depends on how you use your free will. It depends on how you learn the lessons, how fast you learn the lessons. So for example, if you want to learn a particular lesson, you know, for example, the lesson of forgiveness, Okay, the, before the soul is born, the soul says, okay, I want to learn the lesson of forgiveness. So in order to learn that lesson, the soul also chooses certain uh, situations, certain challenges. According to its own karmic reservoir, it will choose certain situations to learn that lesson. And the soul has a free will. After it is born, as I said, we all have a free will. So the soul can choose to learn the lesson or the soul chooses to blame others. So when you are blaming, when the soul is blaming others and not taking responsibility, then the soul is postponing the lesson. So in the next lifetime, the soul takes then one more lifetime to learn the same lesson. Again, one more lifetime, one more lifetime, one more lifetime until the soul learns the lessons. So you will be surprised. Some people, they learn the lesson in one lifetime and some people, they may not learn even after 10 lifetimes because they keep repeating the same things. So that's why I said the awareness is the key factor. The more you are aware, and awareness fundamentally is the quality of your soul. Awareness is the quality of your soul. And your awareness increases the more you do meditation. The more you do meditation, the more you become aware. Your awareness level increases. So as your awareness level increases, you can see crystal clear can see crystal clear what is the lesson to learn and why this is happening so with that clarity you progress very quickly so with that awareness you don't need many lifetimes you need just very short in very short life span uh, with very few cycles you learn you finish all the lessons but if that awareness is not there then out of the ignorance the soul does the same mistakes again and again and again then the soul eventually has to take many lifetimes Okay. Right. And sir, uh, whenever a soul is born for the first time, then all our infant souls, whenever uh, they come to earth. Yes. 
so that's why also i said sorry. that's why i said it is a game it is a game on the planet earth in the beginning the souls inevitably in the beginning everybody inevitably they will do bad karmas and because of the bad karmas they learn the lessons and because of that learning process they evolve so that is that, that is a very game of the soul incarnating on the planet earth of the soul expansion right sir and so one more thing uh, it is said that uh, karma starts for a child by the age of 4 or 5 no not really karma is not for the physical karma is for the soul so so it is by birth right from the birth yeah so that is the topic we'll discuss next like why certain babies are born in challenging environments why certain children are born in poor families why they are born with unloving parents born with parents who are so abusive and why certain uh, souls are born in loving families so because my baby is also suffering yeah, from me, a health challenge yeah yeah let me complete why certain uh, babies are born with certain illness by birth so it all if you see there is injustice or there is tragedy why my poor baby has to suffer but if you see from the physical eyes there is injustice and tragedy but if you see through your spiritual eye there is absolutely no tragedy so this is a statement from an enlightened master is called richard bach so what he said is the depth of your belief the depth of your belief in injustice and tragedy is the mark of your ignorance so in reality the truth is in the whole of the creation in the whole of the creation there is no injustice there is no tragedy for a person who understands the spiritual law for the person who understands the law of karma it is a perfect law and it is not injustice it is not tragedy but if you don't understand that then we are very limited our uh, perception is very limited so when we see our limited perception then there is tragedy but when we expand our perception when we understand the bigger picture then there is no tragedy so everything happens everything happens for a reason so this is the mantra right this is the mantra at every given point of time in your life if you remember this mantra then there is a constant progress the mantra is whatever happens it happens for good and it happens for a reason and if you if you remember this then you come out of the circle okay we All have krishna right. chaitanya uh, last one pradeep yeah. yes krishna uh, hi sir uh, i am from hyderabad a student of uh, dharma shri pita mahapati ji Uh, yes, but right now working uh, at uh, Maitreya's International, uh, can I request you for a class for maybe next week, uh, same class in Telugu, maybe? Can I get your uh, appointment at that time? Sometime uh, you don't need you don't need appointment. It is a yes, but you, you can uh, yes. I'm happy to do that, but we have to see the time slots and the timing. Yeah, yes. can you please take down my number so that maybe you can WhatsApp me later? Uh, maybe discuss. Ramesh, can you help? Can you? Uh, Ramesh, can you help? Take his. Yeah, yeah. I I will be in touch with Krishna Chaitanya. Okay. Nine 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 zero. I will, I will, I will take another platform. Will, yeah. uh, now this is a question answer discussion. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, that's what. That's what. Thank you. Thank maybe you. Maybe you can type. Thank you can type in the chat and uh, you can send. Yeah, it I will type in the chat and uh, thank you so much. I actually met you in uh, Kartal. If you can remember me, I don't know. I met you in Kartal and you yourself talked to me. I didn't talk to you because I know who you are because you bought the crystal and uh, you did the class in Kartal. so no. i i read some things in jaran uh, jara jagat and all so but i never talked never talked to anybody but you yourself came to me and uh, spoke to me and over into spreading uh, yeah anyway i, was, uh, I don't remember you, the krishna i'm 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 hopeful that uh, we will meet again yes thank you thank you yeah yeah, yeah. Thank, thank, thank you yeah we have a uh, kavita reddy yes please go ahead hello sir this is such a wonderful session um my question is um suffering um we are non interference um how does karma play a role in this um sorry come again with the question madam uh suffering we are non interference i'm um, non interference 
I meaning you don't have anything to do with what's going on, but it impacts you. Um, how does karma plays a role in this? It impacts you because of your karma. If karma is not there, it won't impact you. Okay. The very I fact the the very fact it is impacting you is the very understanding that it is karmic. Mm -hmm. And how you do see, you overcome that? Yes, that we will come into the integration part. But for you, the answer is take responsibility, becoming more aware of what you are doing. Take responsibility. And of course, meditation is a very, very, very important tool. It's a necessary tool which helps you to raise your awareness. And through raising your awareness, you can burn your karma, right? So we'll discuss more in the integration part. Yeah, okay. thank you so much, so, sir. Thank you. So I will also want to uh, answer this question. This is one of the common questions people have. Uh, how, do, how do I know whether I'm going through a karmic relationship? How do I know I am uh, stuck? How do, you, how do I know the challenge which I'm going through is a karma or not? How do I know that? How do I identify? So this is one of the common questions people ask. You see, the relationships are very, very, very important because it has an emotional angle to it. And so what relationship you have towards yourself and also what relationships you are currently in, right? It can be your wife, it can be your husband, it can be your children, it can be your friends. And why you attracted that relationship in the first place? And because of that relationship, people suffer a lot. And why they have to suffer? It is because of karma. If something is happening, if something is happening to you, and if something is happening around you, and if that is impacting you, that is a karmic relationship. And if something is happening to you and it is not impacting you, then you are out of karma. So this is a fundamental understanding one needs to have, right? So that with this understanding, you can interpret in the right way and you can start working on it. Okay. So let us go to the... Next question. Any other question? Uh, Pradeep, with this, we have uh, finished all the questions. Okay, good. So uh, I, I hope that uh, it, is, it is precise and it is reaching out. Yeah, uh, we see one of the uh, participants just raising the hands. Shall I unmute? Yeah, yeah, yeah. please go ahead. So through this, uh, it is important, the reason why I want it to be interactive, because this interaction, this asking these questions, when one person asks a question, it helps many, many people understand. And uh, asking questions, understanding with right examples is, is the right way of integrating the things. And uh, this is very, uh, very impactful rather than going through the slides and the theory. Yes, there are a lot of theory. There is a lot of slides I can show you, but this is, uh, uh, this is a very, apt and uh, this is uh, this is a powerful way of integrating the things so i would encourage more and more people to ask questions uh, from whatever the questions they have you see there are two kinds of questions the right question and not a right question the right question is something which really helps them and helps the people around them that is the right question and the question, sometimes people ask a question which doesn't help them at all. And that is not a right question. So I, I encourage all the people to ask right questions. Okay, so we can and go ahead with the next one. Yeah, Revati ji, you can go ahead. Yeah. Uh, can't, can't hear you, Revati ji. Thank you very much for this great session. Uh, yes, ma yes, madam, go ahead. Can we consume uh, sprouts or not? Any plant-based food is fine. Any plant-based food is fine except garlic. Thank you. Any plant-based food, 
any plant based food on the planet earth is absolutely with uh, gratitude and it has positive vibrations it has good vibrations we can consume except garlic why garlic because garlic is created by a dark force and when you uh, when you raise your awareness when you open your third eye you will clearly see that garlic has been created by a rakshasa is created by asuras is created by the negative force to induce fear in the human so the fear the the element the fear element is the key for the human suffering so as long as there is fear the human cannot realize his own true potential so garlic when you eat garlic it purifies sorry no sorry not purifies it calcifies when you eat garlic it calcifies your uh, pineal and the pituitary glands so this pineal and the pituitary glands the sixth chakra and the seventh chakra the pineal and the pituitary glands these are the master glands and they are very soft and volatile so these glands control all the other glands in our system so when this pineal and the pituitary gets calcified then our connection to the higher self becomes limited so that means the light the connection to the light becomes minimized so when the connection to the light becomes minimized then there is lot of fear which radiates within us because i said the opposite energy of fear is the trust so with more and more uh, calcification the more we lose the trust on god and the universe so the more the fear factors plays a role so that's why there should be no garlic and that's why you see all the major religions temples and even brahmins and you know yogis and meditators rishis they will not eat garlic because they know it is from uh, it is from a dark kingdom it is a spy garlic even though it is part of a vegetable but it is a spy you know that's how the spy intrudes into the enemy camp by putting a mask by pretending so garlic is a spy so that's why we don't eat garlic so other than that anything is fine yes Thanks, we have manjula uh, manjula ji yes you can unmute yourself now yeah go ahead thank you yeah very nice question thank you very much um i have a question what is the importance of reacting and responding and what is the impact of Uh, sorry sorry manjula ji we can't hear your voice clearly there is an echo there is an echo and a little bit of a disturbance uh, can you be right. a little more louder please uh yeah sure i look am i clear am i audible yes i think still there is a little bit of a uh, disturbance but it's fine go ahead uh, just try to be a uh, short in the question and we'll be able to answer it. Yeah. Uh, I want to know what is the difference between responding and reacting and what is the importance of reacting um what is the importance of reaction on a karma and that of reaction. Okay. Okay. That's a good question. So if uh, the the relation is very simple. If there is a karma then there is high chances that you will react. so in other words if you are in the karmic loop very naturally you tend to react but with more and more awareness instead of reacting you become creative so the difference is only how creative you are or how reactive you are majority of the people on the planet earth they are reactive majority of the people they are reactive but the people who are in the spiritual path the people who are meditating the people who raise their awareness and the people who are ready to come out of their suffering then they start witnessing so the more they start witnessing the more they start becoming aware then they don't react so they try to see why they have this challenge and they try to learn the lessons so when you are able to witness and try to learn the lessons then you become creative so for the people who are stuck in the karma they are reactive for the people 
who want to come out of the karma, they become creative. That is a relationship. Okay. That was nice, Pradeep. So we have a couple of more uh, participants raising their hand. Sh shall we proceed? I know that uh, we are out of time. Uh, what's the time now? It's oh. three thirty here, so uh, seven p.m. there in India. Uh, okay, so fine. We'll take a couple of questions. Yeah. So we have uh, Swati Reddy. Yeah, you can proceed to unmute yourself. Um, hello, sir. Uh, since you've just spoken about uh, garlic, I, I am try, uh, slowly, you know, trying to get into the spiritual path. It's been one year and I've always heard about garlic and onion. You know, the family, my family, my mother-in-law doesn't eat all these. So I have stopped eating uh, non-vegetarian, but still I consume egg. So, and uh, I really uh, also want to know about the onions. Uh, garlic, yes, I have got the right uh, answer, but I was looking for eggs and onions also. If you could please uh, explain it a bit. Okay. So eggs, again, is a no. Because eggs are meant for its babies and uh, it is not meant for the human consumption. So every hen lay the egg for its own reproduction, for its own babies. So eggs, no. No eggs. And when it comes to onions, it is okay to eat onions. In, the, in some of the uh, spiritual sects or some of uh, the yogis, they don't eat onions or even in some of the monasteries or in some ashrams, they don't use onions because onions raises the hormone levels, right? It, uh, it raises your sexual passion. So that's why most of the uh, brahmacharis and brahmacharinis, uh, they don't eat onions. So that's why in the monasteries they don't want to eat because they are not uh, they are not involving in a sexual life so they don't eat onions but the truth is the middle path is the highest truth so middle path means we all have to be in the family lives we all have to be uh, in the family lives but still uh, spiritual so uh, if you are in the middle path then you will eat onions and there is absolutely uh, no reason for not eating onions. So that is the reason some of the uh, spiritual or religious organizations, they don't use onions, not to trigger the sexual passions. But if you are, in a, if you are living in a happy family life, then eating onions are absolutely okay. Okay. So uh, we have last one, Pradeep Doshi. Yeah, you can unmute yourself. Uh, yeah. I have a question on uh, the types of karma. I'll, I'll get back to you. Yes, yes go ahead. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, I have a question of types of karma. Um, mm -hmm. You have mentioned two types of karma. One is good karma and second is bad karma. As for the Jain philosophy, there are uh, they have classified eight types of karma, um, you know, which includes the lifespan related, uh, the the type of family you will take birth into, and uh, you know there are uh, eight types of karma. So, um, how do you, um, you know, do you believe that those eight types are the subclassification of good and bad? You see, different uh, texts speak uh, different things. It is all subclassifications. So that will be my next topic about the categories of karma, uh, the categories and then the intensities. Okay. So right now, what we have seen is uh, uh, categories, right? Sanchita, Prarabdha, yeah. and then Agami, Kiyamani. So then there are intensities also. So different texts portray uh, different, it's a different expression they have given. Um, I don't, I haven't seen the, the Jain things. I don't know what exactly that eight categories mean, but uh, my general understanding is uh, there are categories and there are classifications. And those categories and classifications are to help us to understand a little more deeper. But broadly speaking, it's very simple. What you speak comes back to you. So like you have Aish Karma in Jain philosophy, um, Aish Karma uh, limits your lifespan, 
um, I don't know if you believe that. Um, everything is the same. Time. Everything, everything is the same. If you, uh, you know, Ayush means the lifespan. If mm-hmm. your karma has in your past lives, you have killed somebody. So that means you are reducing his Ayush. He is meant to live for hundred years and you killed him. So you reduced his Ayush. So that will come back to you. So everything is the same. That's why I said the broader classification is the same. What you do comes back to you in what category you put in. It's your choice. Mm-hmm. But the more simpler it is, the more easy to understand. Truth is very simple. Truth is very, very simple. So the more simpler the truth is, the more it is easy to understand and the more it is easy to integrate it. Maybe after today's and tomorrow's session, um, you, you might probably get your answer, right? So still, if you don't get that, maybe towards the end of our workshop, you can ask the question again. So I'm hopeful that you will find your answers in between because we might deal with certain uh, examples and that certain examples and certain categories of karmas that we are going to discuss might give you answers. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, all right. So I hope friends, this uh, question answer session is going to really, I'm sorry, I'm not uh, keeping a watch on the time. So Ramesh, we still have time, is it? Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it's, it's to you, uh, Pradeep. Uh, we have last uh, one participant with the raised hand and I think then we can wind off. Uh, Okay, so but before we wind off, I want to really uh, also integrate it. I want to integrate this session also with few minutes meditation. Okay, Okay. just five minutes, five, 10 minutes. Okay, go ahead. So we can take as many questions. So let all the questions come today. So this is what I feel it's good. Let all the questions come today. And we will integrate it for today's session. And tomorrow, we will continue on the new aspect. So we'll build on to what we have discussed on today. Okay, so... Uh, we have Manikanta. Yeah, you can unmute yourself. Go ahead, please. Yeah, hi, hi. Hello. Uh, yes. uh, sir, I just want to ask you one more question regarding the, as you mentioned the, about the garlic and onions. Can you just tell me about paneer and mushroom? But also, uh, I just want to know about the Pornami Dhyanam. What is the best, what is the use of the Pornami Dhyanam from you? Thank you. Okay. So, again, paneer is part of a milk product, right? So, already I answered it. So if you take milk, there's nothing wrong in it, but make sure the milk or the milk products you are taking doesn't come from suffering. Okay, so that's the first aspect of the paneer. So if you know that paneer you are getting is from a reliable source, then the source where there is no suffering, where there is no torture of the animals, uh, where the animals are treated well with respect and love. So then you can take paneer, no problem. and. Uh, your next question is uh, mushrooms. See, I, I personally don't take mushrooms because mushrooms are neither a plant nor an animal. It is in between. It is in between. It is a fungus. So mushrooms don't have chlorophyll. You see, all the plant kingdom, they have chlorophyll, the green element, the chlorophyll, which is essential to produce their food using the sunlight and the cosmic energy. But mushrooms don't have chlorophyll. And uh, they feed on the dead matter. So mushrooms feed on the dead matter. They don't feed on the cosmic energy. So when you eat mushrooms, it, it is not a bad karma, but it doesn't give you any positive energy. It doesn't give you uh, pranic energy. It doesn't raise your pranic energy level. So I personally don't eat mushrooms. So here you have to understand about mushrooms is Mushroom, eating mushroom is not a bad karma because it is neither a plant nor an animal. It is just a fungus. It is in between. But it is a choice you have to make because if you eat mushrooms, you are just eating the dead matter. There is no light energy. If you are eating an apple or if you're eating a mango, if you're eating any vegetable or if you're eating green leaves, it has cosmic energy in it. It has prana in it. But mushrooms don't have pranic energy. Okay, so that is the mushroom part. And uh, the Pavarnami Dhyan, the full moon, the full moon meditation is powerful meditation. In, in a, any given calendar day, the, the day of the full moon, the day before the full moon, and the day after the full moon is uh, very powerful. You get more cosmic energy during those days. And uh, if you meditate during those times, you receive more and more cosmic energy. So doing a full moon meditation is uh, approximately three times more powerful. And also if you meditate on 
the galactic, uh, sorry, the eclipse, the day of the eclipse, where there is any shift in the alignment, lunar eclipse, solar eclipse, a new moon day, full moon day, all these days uh, are very powerful. Okay, but full moon, precisely full moon has more cosmic energy. Thanks, Pradeep. Very well said. I really like the explanation about the mushrooms. So thank yeah. you. And uh, we have uh, Gayatri Ji. Yeah, you can unmute yourself. Hello, sir. Uh, yes, madam. Yes, yes, Gayatri Ji, go ahead. Gayatri Ji, it's not audible. I think there is an issue, uh, Pradeep. Uh, okay. This Fine. is Gayatri Radhakrishna from India. I, I'm, I'm regarding this vegetarian questions. One is, in Lok Sankrampa, I have read about the meat eating. In Himalayan hmm. mountain, there is... That is wrong, the... madam. Uh, okay. That is wrong, madam. So, Lok Sankrampa, the... everything he has said, everything he has said is right, except for that part. Okay. Okay, then the second question is, in some religion, the meat eating is the main food and the European countries, they also consume so much meat, especially mm -hmm. in Eastern countries, we can follow for certain group of people. Karma but is there for everybody, madam. Karma is there whether for a beggar or whether for a king or whether for an Asian or whether for a European or whether for an American or an African, karma is karma. So okay. it is because of the karma, the... Uh, the whole of the world is suffering. The whole humanity is suffering. See, there is again categories. There is individual karma. There is group karma. There is family karma. There is nation karma. And there is a planet Earth karma. So that we are going to discuss in the next level. So karma is a very huge topic. It's a depth. It's a topic in depth. We have to understand yes. the deeper. So yes. the humanity suffering is because of the collective karma. Okay. It is, the, okay. it is the curse of the animals. It is the suffering the animals, animal kingdom is going through because the humans are giving so much suffering. That's why we are getting back. All those pandemics and all those COVID-19s, it's because of our karma. Okay. So we have to take responsibility. Okay. Uh, and one more cl clarification I needed. In, in Lop Sankrampa, I'm one of the, uh, my favorite author, what I, what he explains is we are not killing the animals the animals dead animals which is preserved in the ice we we preserve it in our uh, house and we are using there is no karma he explains is it yeah. Uh, yeah if you if you eat an animal which is already dead naturally yes if you eat an animal which is already dead naturally then there is no karma see the karma uh, is not because you are eating meat the karma is because you are killing for that meat. Okay. So if there okay. is a dead animal who is already okay. dead naturally, yes. then okay. you go and eat absolutely no problem, absolutely no karma. Okay. You can eat, but okay. the energy, of course, if you are eating a dead matter, the energy is low energy. But the they energy say is that... low, but no karma. Okay. But they say that we are not having the natural vegetation in the Himalayas. So we are eating for our survival, they say. No, okay. no, no, madam. That is uh, that is a limited understanding. No. In, in okay. Himalayas, there are more than 20,000 people on the planet Earth who are living on breath, who are living on prana. So once you are reached to certain level, to such level, that you, ab you absorb the cosmic energy directly into your being, then you don't need how, plants. How oh, come the great... Okay. It is possible. The... Let, me, let me complete, madam, please. Let okay, sir. So the Himalayas are known for the yogis and the yogis, they don't eat. They eat very little and they survive for months and months and months. And there are yogis meditating for hundreds and hundreds of lifetimes. And even in our physical day-to-day -day, uh, society, in the public life, there are so many people. I said there are more than 20,000 people. I can give you any number of examples. There is this one of uh, this lady called Jesh Mohin Just from Australia. Yes. Jasmohin from yes. Australia. She is a breatharian for more than 40 years. Yes. And she is a mother and she is a grandmother and she has gone through everything. 
she delivers and she has also a child and then grandchildren absolutely no eating food just by prana and even there is yogi there is sun yogi who is a famous uh, sun yogi uh, you know he just takes the food by the sunlight he just gazes the sun and that is his food so there will be a day there will be a day on the planet earth where the humanity reaches to such a level where we directly absorb the prana where we vibrate in that frequency but right now the humanity is not ready the human uh, cells the human evolution is not ready on a mass level individually if you have the free will you can go through that but the masses are not ready and that's why the plants are an intermediary base what does the plants do the plants absorb the cosmic energy and they make it as a food like fruits and vegetables and then give it to us so when we are eating the fruits and vegetables we are consuming the cosmic energy right okay so okay. the plants are just like an intermediary thing for us to absorb the cosmic energy but if you do meditation every day your food requirements reduces you do meditation every day naturally your hunger reduces because you are so charged with cosmic energy and if you do intense meditation then you directly absorb the energy and there are some people even in this group there are people who have experienced it in in my retreats i make sure they i don't give any food to them for 15 days for 10 days 15 days 20 days they don't eat any food just liquids just water and lime juice that's all and they are very happy because they absorb the cosmic energy directly some portion of it they absorb directly and some they take it with juices so there is a gradual process everything is possible if the himalayan yogis can do why can't we do if jashmohin can do why can't we do absolutely there is possible first we need to understand the science of it and then when you understand the science and practice it of course everybody can do it Uh, and there is if you don't mind one more question yes madam uh, go such, ahead uh, such a great master uh, lofsang rampa why mm. he has not been given a correct answer why they follow no this? judgments <laughs> madam no judgments <laughs> okay. no judgments whatsoever you see i'll give you an example okay for example you are in the grade uh, you are studying in a grade 10 you are a 10th class student and there are five subjects and if you pass all the five subjects then you graduate but if you fail in any of the subjects you don't graduate yes or no yes uh, for example understood. you have studied four subjects and all the four subjects you got 100 out of 100 and okay. one subject you failed uh, will you graduate uh, i understood no. sir <laughs> I so understood. again you. you have to repeat the sub- you have to repeat the same 10th grade again when you repeat okay. again what happens just because you have completed all the other subjects perfectly you don't need to read you just go to the exam and write it without reading but okay. the exam what you failed you have to make an effort and you have to read and you have to pass the test so when all the great, there are many masters there are many masters they consider themselves to be spiritual of course they are they have some special gifts they have some special abilities no doubt about it but yes. they miss this one subject and they have to take birth again Okay. you see ramakrishna paramahamsa and vivekananda they are enlightened yes. people but they still ate fish so they have to be born uh, again to complete the cycle okay okay so i personally know the reincarnation of ramakrishna paramahamsa okay they have to take one more lifetime and in this lifetime he learnt meditation he learnt vegetarianism so he okay. passed the test okay wonderful answer sir thank you thank you very much thank you okay thank you madam so uh, is there uh, anything else just before before i wind up i want to just uh, quickly um, share what we are going to uh, discuss tomorrow so that that gives a little bit of uh, a heads up so i i hope you can see my screen yeah yes pradeep so then we are going to discuss uh, we have discussed about the categories of karma right so tomorrow we'll go into the intensities and uh, how the prarabdha is going to change and again 
the intensities are gained based on the intensities you have classification like dhrida karmas dhrida and adhrida karmas and then other the karmas like fixed and fixed and unfixed and unfixed how you, how to deal with those things and uh, how how to understand more of this intensity how to understand the intensities of the karmas with more examples more case studies and then we are going to uh, speak about the incarnation the law of reincarnation and then we are going to speak a lot about pre birth planning and uh, how carefully the pre birth planning happens before we are born and what role the spirit guides plays and what uh, planning sessions how we take the planning sessions and how this is going to is closely associated uh, with the law of karma and we'll understand the bigger picture in uh, tomorrow session so this is for tomorrow and uh, if you don't have uh, any questions then we can meditate and then we can conclude is it more is it already time because i don't see the time is it two hours already yeah yeah Okay, so <laughs> it is two hours fifty minutes. So oh, it's almost three hours, is it? Okay, yeah, close to okay. three. Yeah. All right. So yeah. let us meditate for five minutes and let us integrate this understanding. And as I said, uh, you should the spiritual law should be understood from your heart space because your heart space is your. balance chakra this is your anahata you know we have three lower chakras and we have three higher chakras and to be in the middle path means to be in the heart space so let us meditate and integrate today we have discussed extensively about uh, compassion non violence and being kind to all the animals and taking responsibility of our actions so this is what we discussed today so let us integrate that in our heart space with a 5 minutes meditation so gently close your eyes sitting comfortably and we will have a gentle music let the music help us to go deep into our breath the integration happens very naturally all you need to be is to be with the breath the more you are with the breath the more the integration happens kindly be with your breath my dear friends being in the present moment totally
one minute, my dear friends. Final 10 seconds. And gently place your hands on your eyes. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. You may slowly remove the hands whenever you are ready and open your eyes. Okay, friends. So that was a that was a great experience for me to connect with all of you. And uh, thanks to Ramesh. Thank you, Ramesh, for this organizing this class. And uh, this whole month, every weekend, we plan to. Uh, bring in a new topic and uh, of course uh, Ramesh also will share his own uh, topics and we have few other masters sharing and we'll continue this topic tomorrow and uh, we will we'll see more case studies and more examples and uh, we will understand what we need to do now what is what we should do so that we take care of our karma that we we try to neutralize it and also we create more good karma for our future so thank you very much thanks we'll a lot tomorrow thank you thanks a lot pradeep thanks a lot yeah. that was a wonderful session and uh, i have learned a lot i'm sure with many of our participants it's it's so very wonderful energies and wonderful wisdom that had been shared uh, great questions and uh, very well answered and I'm sure everyone had got their piece of information that that uh, they were waiting for. So friends, thanks everyone who had joined today and adding up your energies into this session. It means a lot. We have participants from across the world who had joined. So that's that's wonderful to integrate these sense of oneness into this session. And uh, we have many participants asking about having a video of this. Yes, this will be shared on YouTube channel, Beam Meditation. I will post the link again here in the chat. So uh, you will find this session there. Uh, it will be telecasted at 6 p.m. Germany time on that channel. And it will be also telecasted in many other Pyramid Meditation channels that you will find depending on their schedules. So uh, see you all back tomorrow, friends, at 1 p.m. Germany time or European time or 4.30 p.m. India time to hear and dive into the second part of the same session. So thanks a lot. And thank you again, Pradeep. Wonderful. Oh, pleasure. It's my pleasure and it's a great joy. Thank you all. Thank Namaste. you. Thank you, friends. Bye. Namaste. Bye.